right yeah this this one okay so what what we're going to take a look at you guys is there's this event going on in germany and berlin it's called this armageddon event so you play two games of blitz if it's tied at one one you play the armageddon game where the players have five minutes and four minutes i believe with no, with no increment um something like that so let's take a look at this game it's a good thing to breathe Ivanka. And I do recommend breathing. <laughs> you know, the day you breathing stop breathing is, is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but meanwhile, on the other hand, taking a look at the particular opening, it does seem like this... Volume should be good, I think. Price menu because as far as London... Is this the right goes, game or is this the wrong this game? Like the dream no, this is the wrong game. Right. I mean... Seconds left. No, this is the right game. Sorry, wrong, wrong game. Here we go. Maneuver his knight, drop back his light square bishop, and kick it out the kick the black knight away in his own time, a different time. Um, oh, I'm is the volume good? I think it's good, right? Could be louder. The only danger I think with kicking it is that black might be able to attack the queen with his bishop. Uh, I, otherwise, I think it's just a very strong move. And he, he, you're right, though. The clock management, they're both under two minutes now. It's good? Okay. Uh, Dominguez's heart rate still quite... Uh, he did kick it. You've got to kick it away. Now, why not attack... Now, one quick thing that I'm going I'm to say, you guys, for anybody who's watching this, um, it's very important to note, and I've said this before, one of the biggest things that has helped uh, Magnus Carlsen when he plays in... Um, when he plays in events is that I do believe his heart rate in general is lower than everybody else's by a significant margin. I think Magnus is generally never goes about above like 90 to 95. Everybody else's will go into like the 120s, 130s. And I think that's one of the things that helps Magnus more than um more than anybody else. Um, we've seen it in events in Norway. There was some other event where I feel like they had the heart rate monitor for him as well. But nonetheless, yeah, 146, 139 is pretty high. I don't know if it stays that high, but let's see. The queen here. Will he attack the queen? If he attacks the queen, he did. He's getting very tactical. What's happening here? The bishop's attack. The pawns come. This is a key moment in the game. And there's tactics everywhere. 141. <laughs> Staying up there. In black's favor. I mean, it's saying... Although, honestly, we shouldn't make fun of this because those of you guys who are unfamiliar with chess history, one of the greatest chess players of all time, his name was Jose Raul Capablanket, and he was a world champion, great player from Cuba. And I believe that one of the biggest issues that Capablanca had is that um, I think he had high blood pressure. There's a lot of stress, and it's ultimately, I think, what actually did kill him. So, like, it's not actually, it's not a complete joke um, when we talk about this. Because Capablanca, greatest Cuban player of all time. Lenny Dominguez from Cuba. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not a joke. I, I think that Lenny, Lenny, not Lenny, sorry, um, uh, Jose Raul, he, uh, I think that's what he died from. I think he died from having, um, from having, like, high blood pressure and, and heart problems. All right, let's keep going. It's gone. Black's way. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Wesley it, it, so hit 185 in the first round. Was this the first round of the day here? Is this is this first round of the day? Is this Wesley? I mean, I'll I'll come back to it. Was it was it this day or was it another day? I got to see that 185. Um, yeah, any it was day one. Okay, I'll I'll find I'll find it. Still I'll find it in a second. I'd say here, but yeah, I mean that night if it if it can't find a good square, white should just about 140, be right. 145. Oh, yeah. Remember, white is in a must-win situation. I think it's going to come down to the clock. It you know, will like be. These, a lot of these Armageddon games. I have to say, though, with all due respect to the, the people who are putting the show on, first of all, the board is, this color is, I mean, just absurd. But secondly, like, this music is uh, is just kind of killing me, too. This, this like, repetitive, like, beat, beat beating music is just kind of killing me. They've only got a minute and a half now. So much money at stake here as well. You must be feeling the pressure. I mean, at least if Dominguez loses. And that's why also, you guys, this is where I'm going to step in. And uh, let, me, let me adjust the cam a little bit. It's not, it's a little bit uh, low. There we go. This is where I'm going to step in and say, this is why it's really good when you have a job as a professional streamer. Because then when you have to play in what should be high stress situations in chess tournaments, you don't have to worry about these things. And you can just relax and try to play your best. And your heart rate probably isn't going to go through the roof. Very good workout because yeah. of his heart rate. Well, He's lost loads of calories. He doesn't need to go to the gym today. He drops his back night back. And, uh, again. Um, and not to pause, I'm, I, I'm becoming a pause hobby, but I have a question. They just said that you're losing, they said you're losing calories. Is this actually true? Are you losing calories from having a high heart rate? Because that doesn't sound right to me. I know they're not doctors, but that doesn't sound right. Is that right? Because there's the common saying that you lose 6,000 calories when you play a game of chess. It is? It is or it isn't. I know you, some people are saying yes, some are saying no. No, yes. 
I don't know. I, I can't tell who's joking and who's not joking. More calculations to be done. So there's so many captures on the board. Bishop takes bishop, bishop takes knight. Is there queen takes pawn as well? This looks very, very logical because if we look at the- Good for the Andrew's up a pawn here. Off, they both have weak or no, it's even material, sorry. It's a bishop d6, rook c6. Side where the rook is lining up. Or rook d6, rook d6 also playable. And also, this white knight has a lot of potential. But then white's going to go d5, d takes d6, which is scary. Okay, right, queen c5, d5 tactics here. on the board. Yeah. The rook queen c5 comes and d5. Across. It looked like white won a piece there, but this one fifty is going to get the white knight back. Look, oh, hang on a minute. What's happened to the time? Yeah. That can't be right. Okay, the time, the electronic time is not quite updating. Dominguez has more time than that. Thankfully, yeah. otherwise he'd be in a lot of trouble there. Talking about trouble, I mean, take a look at the position. He's in a lot of trouble over the board. He's dropped a pawn. The c6 pawn is going to fall. Queen takes queen on the board. And now pawn takes pawn. Take a look at that passed pawn two squares away from queening. All he needs to do is activate both King e7, rooks. bring the king. Ah, oh, there's rook d1, rook d7, well, yeah, not so it easy. It looks very good for Andrew Tang at the moment because he has this big, one big edge three. Oh, and as Yvanka says, it's two squares and queening. He's going to bring his other rook over, surely, to put behind it. Get your rooks behind the board and just shove them up the board. A nice, safe move here at the moment. And I'll tell you the clock times uh. are both down to about 45 seconds left. And, okay, uh, staying well, at 140 though, which is good. Into the middle. The only way that White's going to win this, though, he needs to get his king across somehow. And he's moving his king up the board, but will he be able to get it into the action? Dominguez, like before, just has to keep Go the around the side, in. right? Go to h 6 7 Andrew maybe? Can win, but he must win. He must win this position. Just keep an eye on the live clock, though. I think this is yeah. what's going to happen. It's going to just come 155. down to what we call the chess <laughs> flagging. Look at that white king. It's a brave king, isn't it? <laughs> it is a brave king. <laughs> Vamos. I mean, but I mean, oh, it has to be done when both players king G7? are under yeah. 30 seconds left. And look at the king. It snaked its way all the way to G7. Oh, a five, okay, good is move. In big trouble, but he FG4, can continue good playing move. Because it's all going to fall down. Rook d4, excellent the move from, uh, from Andrew. Oh, now. You I don't know why, feel like I, I thought like King is in danger. Supposed to be a hyper bullet player, but look at the time. It's just keep an eye on the clock. They're not getting extra time. It doesn't matter. He is now. Oh, that's a very risky move. He is. It must be going Andrew's way. Oh, look, they, they can't even move the pieces correctly. They're going so quickly here. <laughs> They're moving seven? so quickly. We can't even keep up now. He's got to check. He's going to get a queen on the board. Has he got enough time? He's getting the extra. <laughs> okay, first things first. This is, of course, I, I mean, I don't want to say it's a legal move, but this is one of the problems. Like, rook, that rook is kind of in between. Now, as a professional player, you know where the rook is, of course. Let me go back five seconds. Can't even and I'll keep try up now. now. He's got to check. He's like, okay, like. How do I free? I, I need to freeze in the exact second. Um, just so we can. Or no, this is too far back. Um, how do I freeze it right here? Oh, well, that's a very risky move. He is. It One must second. be going Andrew's way. Go. Oh, look, they, they can't even move the pieces correctly. They're going so quickly here. <laughs> They're moving so quickly. We can't even keep up now. He's got to check. He's okay, so here we go. So this is the first things first. Um, when, you, when you look at this position, uh, this rook is very clearly in between two squares. The rook is between f8 and e8. It's basically a 50-50. Um, now, the thing is, this is where, like, you know that, I mean, Andrew Tang obviously, I mean, not even Andrew Tang, both players are grandmasters. They've played, played a lot of chess. But, like, here, if you're Dominguez, you could say, you could play, like, Rook H1, checkmate, and you lose the game. Because you could say the Rook is on e in between the two squares, and you play Rook H1 and say checkmate. So, this is why this is why a lot of events have increment, because this is the first spot we see here. I'm actually going to put this at 0.25 speed. Um, uh, how, how to playback speed. I'm going to put it at 0.25. But like here, this is—it's very clearly in between the uh, in between the two squares, and you can say it's on e8 or f8. Now, as I said, we're both everyone here is chess players, so they know what the move that's intended is. But nonetheless, um, this is the first move that is is questionable, very very questionable because the rook is in between. Now, of course, Lenny here is like he's such a nice guy that he doesn't do it. But I guarantee you, there there definitely are some Russian players who I was playing and stuff. They would play rook h1 and claim checkmate. They'd be just like, okay, rook h1 checkmate, rook's on e8. Sorry. Um, and and that's 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 that would definitely happen. But you know, Dominguez, he's he's a nice guy, so it doesn't happen. Let's keep going. Okay, let, let, let's watch it normal speed, and then when I need to, uh, then when I need to stop it, we'll put it at uh, we'll we'll, we'll put it back at zero point two five. Okay.
Then I'll do it. Let's see. Queen. He's got six it, seconds. Six seconds to win this. Anything's possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. Wait a second. Actually, as soon as I did that, we need to go to 0 0.25 speed. Didn't Dominguez go to play King C5 and then he put the rook on D6? Wait, 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 wait a second. That just got really dramatic for, for no reason. Let me go back five seconds and play it. Let me go back. Um, what are we? 126.53. Let's go back here. Okay. I'll, I'll mute it for a second. Sure. Let's mute. Let's mute it for a second. Um, yeah. Okay. Check. King C6. Okay. Okay. Now this is this is also very very shaky by by both players because again like Andrew like. It's it he like he takes the pawn with one hand, he does hit the clock, I think, with the same hand, but his other hand kind of gets in the way. Um, and and also by his other hand getting in the way, this of course is not this is not intentional, but this is a classic trick that hustlers use where when you're playing game without increment, they'll put their hand to block you. So his hand right here that you guys see right here with the sleeve, he's actually blocking Dominguez from being able to get over and hit the clock. So it's, I mean it's unintentional, but nonetheless, this is also kind of a, a party foul. Because the, the 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 hand is just block it's just blocking him. It's just a great block. So if you make the move, then you have to go over the hand to hit the clock. Also, notice how it was it was also uh, he also was stopping him. You saw the block. Dominguez trying to get the hand down to reach the rook, but he, he couldn't quite do it. So that that actually yeah, that's a great block, great block, fantastic. Yeah, it, he he blocked him from being able to get the rook. He had, it it cost him an extra half a second. So, and meanwhile, also, in the meantime, this is also really funny because look at what happens here. So Dominguez has the rook in one hand, and it's like he, he hits the clock with the other hand, but also for like a good second there, the, the rook is like, the rook is just not on the board and it's hidden in his hand. So this, this is really good. Like, this is really good. Like, see? So the rook, rook actually goes off the table, so he picks it up with this hand, then he puts it down, and then he hits it with the other hand, and then we get... Okay, and now we also get, a, he touches the king, but then he moves the rook. Okay. Um, okay, and this is also good. Now the pawn is on e6 here too. The pawn is not on f6. So Andrew takes the rook, but the pawn magically moves to e-file. Now, again, this gets even better because now after king d6, I, I don't know if I can freeze it. Um, but you see, he, he takes the queen. He takes... And now you see when he takes the pawn here as an e6 square. So when Dominguez goes king e7, you can just play, or king d6 rather, you can just play king d6 takes e6 and it's a draw. So this is also um, another foul. Uh, I mean, it's a foul by both sides. Yeah, Andrew's watch, yeah, Andrew's here in chat. I mean, this is, this is why it's very hard to have these situations because at the end of the day, I mean, there's so many, so many party fouls by everybody that it becomes, it becomes comical. But let's see what happens here. King d6, king d6. And then you see you see Dominguez go king e6, and the pawn's kind of also in between all the squares again here. Um, this, this, yeah, it's like this is this is really good. I mean, just look at this pawn. He goes here, king g7, and then he yeah, and then king <laughs> king <laughs> king e6, and the pawn is just sitting here right in between the two squares. So he goes f7, knocks Dominguez as king. I mean, okay, at this point everybody's like. Also, I have to. Also, this gets better because the queen somehow is now on g8 too. If you're looking, the queen is not on the f8 square. The queen is on g8. And I'm really... Does this mean he puts the queen on the diagonal from g8 or f8? Okay, he plays queen f6. Okay, now again, this queen is kind of in between every square here. You see like this queen is now between f6 and g5. King's on d2, also an illegal move because the queen's on g5, so you can take the king. Doesn't matter. Again, Andrew's queen is magically sitting between g3 and g4. His king is down on the board. Meanwhile, Dominguez's clock is running. Um, Dominguez's king goes flying. Andrew makes a move. And now nobody knows what the heck is going on. And, and, <laughs> and this is insane. Okay, so let's watch this at normal speed. Let's, let's watch this now at normal speed. Um... Let me get back like here we go let's watch this at normal speed okay now back to regular speed normal and let's let's watch it can't even keep up now he's got to check he's, he's going to get a check. queen on the board has he got enough time he's, he's getting the extra queen he's got six he's, seconds six seconds to win this the anything's possible flying. there's rooks off the board queen's off and the board what, what is happening <laughs> it's all over <laughs> the shop here oh my Two word seconds. what is it oh my, oh my god, god. <laughs> and that's know. it what oh is, my god oh let the clock 
zero versus one. So I, I yeah, so this, this, I mean, this is, of course, really, really hilarious. Um, what was that? I mean, basically, obviously, it's an Armageddon game. There's no increment. And both players made probably at least, like, five party fouls in, in, in that time scramble. Um, so you can't really say, like, one player did something worse than the other player. Um, but that's why, at the end of the day... Armageddon is very, I mean, it's a good concept for over the board, but certainly it's it's an issue versus online. So obviously when you play online, that, that can't happen where the pieces fall off. Why did nobody interfere? I mean, I don't even know if an arbiter is supposed to interfere there. I mean, I think it's on the player on either player that could kind of do could could complain. Um, but it, I mean it's one of the reasons that Armageddon's very, very shaky at times. Because you know, the other thing I would say about Armageddon though is that I think the rules for the FIDE World Cup or events like that, there is supposed to be an increment at move number 60. It's not straight up Armageddon where neither player gets more time. Uh, at move 60, you do get, I think, a two-second increment. So that's the first thing. We're supposed to stop the clock with four seconds left. It's not happening. Well, that's the other thing. So it's like in chess, you have all these rules about how like you're supposed to do things like someone moves a piece off a square. You're supposed to like stop the clock, call an arbiter, all these things. But at the end of the day, when you're in the heat of the moment, nobody's got any time left. That's, that's obviously not going to happen. Um, so you can't really blame, like, you, you can't blame either player. It was determined to be a win for White. I, th I think Andrew won on, won on time. No, there was no arbiter there. And at the end of the day, Lenny, Lenny Dominguez's clock was at zero. Andrew had one second. Um, so yeah, it's just, I, I, I think the format is interesting for this, but y this really should not happen. Of course, on the other hand, there are people who would say, well, this would, this makes chess, uh, more fun. There are people who would say it's like more fun to see this at the end of the day, but I, I don't know. Can they review the game? I mean, I think I mean I think Andrew Andrew won the game. I mean, there's no reason that like Andrew shouldn't get the win, you know, after the fact. I mean, it's I, I just don't get the point. Um, yeah, it's it's fun every now and again, sure. I hate it. It actually annoys me. Okay, yeah, it's like arcade chess. Can we get an end game analysis? There's not much that needs to be. I mean, what I would say about this end game, actually, I'll tell you where Dominguez went wrong. If you want my precise, like, actual pure end game analysis, I'll tell you where he went wrong. Where 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 Dominguez goes wrong here is at this point when he has like I think he even had more seconds here. If I go back five seconds, yeah, he's got thirty seven seconds here. If or is that thirty one or thirty seven? Yeah, it's thirty seven. So you see, it's thirty six now. This is where Dominguez threw the game because he has 10 seconds more. And at this point, he needs to just play F5, play fast, and go from there. But here he squanders those 10 seconds because he's trying to be a little bit too precise. And that's what leads to the situation. I firmly believe that if Dominguez had played F5 here with 37 seconds on the clock, probably he would not have lost this game. I'm not even sure we get into that same situation necessarily. But this is where he, he kind of he, he let it let it slip when he when he when he used the 10 seconds to play King F6. He didn't go F5. And then of course he does it again later here. At some point. Yeah, and even here, yeah, here's another one where he slightly double clutches before playing it. And that's what leads to the whole situation. So that, that's probably his big mistake. Andrew, of course, is winning the end game. I mean, if he has, you know, minutes on the clock, this is technically winning for White. So it's not really a question. But also, I have to say, I do wonder, did the um, did the organizers, like, put... Um, put um, Put some oil on the board or something because the way those pieces are just sliding all over the place is completely insane like if you look at this like i mean the board looks like it's oiled up it really does doesn't it it's like one of those things where they they they, they have to spray the oil like you do um for uh for like bowling or something it really look it does look very oiled up doesn't it the board is lubed <laughs> yeah i mean it, it really does i'm not i'm not trying to be weird or anything but like, you just, you see the way those pieces are just flying. It's just like, it, it really does feel like it. Cash Royal? Yeah. But it's, it, it's, it's all, it's, it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. But yeah, that's the first slip. Now it's slipping. Everything slides. Everything goes every which way. Um, the pieces slide quite nicely. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably great, except when you have no time. But yeah, I mean, so many party fouls. Of course, of course, King C3, King V4. Yeah, this whole thing is just, uh, just really, really good. So that's the first thing I want to cover. We have, um, uh, we also have Wesley. So you guys said Wesley So's heart rate got to 185. Um, uh, I, I have to find that. You, you guys said it got to. Um, you said it got to one 185, right? Day one. Where's day one? Day day one highlights. Okay, day day one. Uh, two minutes. Where where's the? I mean, they're they're live right now. Where where's day one? I don't see day one. I see day one highlights. Uh, check live. Okay. Um. Oh, there we go. So Wesley got to 185. I need to see where where is Wesley at 185. Whoa! By the 83. way, Meanwhile, Wesley so is 148. Whoa! 148 to 83. 148 to 83 in the opening. 
That's actually really insane. I mean, 148 in, like, the middle game or any game where it's, like, starting to get dramatic, but 148 on, like, move 12 in the opening of a slot where you have the bishop pair and it's pretty peaceful? That's actually surprising. Sam's is broken. Sorry, I got move. that wrong. It's Wesley with a heart. And now he's going up to 152. We have to mention any heart rate over 120 means the player is under severe stress. So the moral of the story, you guys, since you see Wesley at 156, the moral of the story is that chess obviously puts you under tremendous stress. So that's why you don't want to play chess professionally. Because clearly you're under a lot of stress. It's a very stressful thing to spend your time on. So Wesley perhaps Yay! caught off guard and uh, maybe feeling pressure of being in this situation. Of 162? Wait, what? 162? Starting with the white pieces and needing to put the pressure on. No, the I mean, the reason I don't understand 162 here is because, like, in this position, it's a, it's not, like, stable, stable, but you have the bishop pair. It's probably a small advantage for white. Very minimal breaks. I mean, your king's not under pressure, anything like that. So that's why I'm a little bit surprised. Go. Oh, the position has changed somewhat because there's been a trade of pawns. So everything is brewing up really nicely. I guess Sam's is broken, right? His is broken. It just says 83, so it must be broken battle because Wesley does have the trumps he's gonna get the center and oh that's why we see Sam just challenge to strike while the iron's hot and uh putting the pressure he's just relentless against Wesley it's a very Wesley looks so calm because yeah. we mentioned the two bishops and you can Jeez. see that white Wesley has those two bishops and bishops they're like arrows they're like missiles they work on lots of open lines and black is deciding to open up the position so generally positionally this will help those bishops and maybe Wesley is preparing a sacrifice with that light square bishop I mean, now see here I understand that I understand the heart rate getting up because now black is trying to attack like their idea is like pawn takes b4 there's pressure on the c file if you take on c5 this knight on d7 can jump this e5 or c5 square like at this point i understand because now there is definitely some pressure because the game is heating up a very brave move now if the bishop went and captured black's pawn on the right hand side but on the other hand sam is playing tactically opening things mm -hmm. up because it is a risky scenario neither side is castled castling is where you get your king safe why haven't they castled Yvanka? Um, maybe because they were worried about their kings. And we see Wesley just play a very unorthodox move. He drops the queen back to its starting square, getting ready to relocate her to the king side if needed. And uh, wow, Wesley still not casting the king and instead choosing to undermine black's pawns in the queen's side. Yvanka. Instead just accelerating the play. When I, when I very commonly or rarely go down the gym, I never hit 160. This is incredible. The whole game, Wesley's heart rate has been so high. We never see this in chess. We never see how high the heart rate goes. And there's been many studies showing that grandmasters lose a lot of weight when they're playing chess. And I think that this must confirm that. The position is still fairly even, I would say. I do prefer white. I do like the two bishops, but black doesn't have many problems. This, this is some here. pretty funny he commentary. He doesn't have problems, but he surely must have breathed a big sigh of relief after getting the king castled. And uh, now the tempo is on Sam because he has to justify playing against this bishop pair. And I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. Like, is it actually just wrong? Because I don't know how, I don't know how your heart rate can be 160 here. I don't know how it can be just looking at the position fundamentally. Um, I don't know, call the ambulance. It must be wrong, right? I mean, right or not? I mean, I've seen I've seen myself at like 130 occasionally. Like 160, I, I don't think I've ever seen, except when I played Magnus and we were like in a massive time scramble at the end. Uh, that's when I think I have hit 160. A look at those pawns on the queen side. Yes, they're fine. You, you the think it's you think it's just fake? Behind a lot of squares and uh, consequences. Do we get 170? I, I mean, I don't know. Has parked itself on B5 and Wesley maximizing his pieces. 170 nearly. They're playing a lot quicker now. Look at the tempo change. Both of them have now spent about half of their time. The good thing about Sam's position is the knights. Knights are extremely tricky pieces. Some people even say that in blitz chess, this is blitz chess, it's very, very quick, that knights are better than bishops because they're more tricky. They're the only pieces. It's got to be wrong, around, right? It can't be right. It does look actually very nice for Sam in the middle Let board. So I think it's still fairly even. It pop. could come down to the clock, though. And Wesley has the advantage of 20 seconds. Let's remember, if there's clock 
gets to it's zero, gotta be wrong there's lose. no way you lose the match yeah you certainly do and we also have to remind ourselves and all the viewers that uh, each player gets two seconds upon every move and, uh, 171 uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head there when you talked about the minor pieces for me I think white is a tiny bit better because of the bishop pair, but also because of the knights parked on f6. I mean, I, how can it be? I don't know how it can be wrong. Maybe it's just like not on the right spot on your arm or something. It's too inconsistent to be wrong. I mean, Sam's obviously isn't working, but like you're saying that it's it's because it's skipping so much that it, it's probably not wrong. I mean, really? Have a good circuit. It really wants to fight its sibling there on d5. Oh, whoa. whoa! They're speeding the up there. Aren't they? are now I mean. upping the speed. <laughs> you know, when we see a whole flurry of moves. Now we've gone into an end game, and this end game has to favour White. I mean, I mean, I'm not so sure. I mean, I, I think it's. You know, if we look at the pawn structure, there's two things in a game of chess. It's your pawns, which are your foot soldiers, and then it's your pieces, which are your main sort of powerful units. Well, white has this actually weak pawn in the middle of the board, and black's now put a knight in front of that pawn, and I can see that white pawn being lost. And at this level, if you go one pawn down, you're really going to struggle. Uh, maybe just in the balance, but the clock time, to my eyes, is going to be key. It certainly is going to be key and uh, interesting move that I can't, it can't be right right I mean his structure there on the king side and securing a spot for the uh. knight and we can see Wesley centralizing the queens this is a perfect strategy got to put the queens in the center that, that way they have maximum power and let's remind everyone that they do get a little bit of time every move that they make. It's not a lot of time. This can't be right. Two, <laughs> I mean, just to help them out here. And it seems like Wesley is still very tense there with his heart rate monitor being basically over double of Sam's, which is frankly quite incredible. Those black knights, they're centralized. They're looking very good to me. Black has kept his monster knight in the middle of the board. White now might be trying to swap that knight off, but he will lose the advantage of the bishop pair. I still think it's fairly even. No one has made a breakthrough. No one has won material. Both kings are quite safe, and they're really picking up the pace. Oh, there's a big threat here. A there's five? a big threat. The white queen is threatening to take the pawn with check. Black must do something about that move. He has to either drop the knight back or take a committal move. But, take back the this queen. This can't be right. What happened. the heck? And there we see a trade knight bishop. Uh, oh, but you, you know what makes me wonder whether this could be right, though, not to be the pause Andy here, but the reason is, like, this position is getting a little bit scary now. It's getting very, very tense here, so I could see it being correct, actually. Like, if Black plays E5 and you have all these weaknesses with all these pawns in the center and on the king side, I could see it. This is such a difficult end game for both sides. And are we going to see a trade of queens? If we see a trade of queens, it's going to be obviously color bishop, and it it's is. probably going to be a draw. There's just no way the two pieces can fight each other this can't be right i mean the players it's it's funny these bishops you can look at them and look what color squares i, I mean this the... can't be right because this is just an opposite color bishop ending it's a draw there's no way wesley can stay at 170 here like in a, in a dead draw and end game like this where there's no chance for either side i i don't really i, I don't know it feels like it's a little bit too high did it start to drop the let's squares, see and the other one is on the dark squares i think it's boris spasky who said Chancellor when he got divorced, we were just like bishops Watch on opposite color squares. We weren't Watch really connecting. The and the problem with these bishops mm. is that they can't connect with each other. So they just dance around in the moonlight, never really hitting each other. And that's why it's very likely that this will be a draw. One side is gonna have to make a big error to lose, but Sam is down to 20 seconds. But as long as he keeps moving, he's gonna get a bit of extra time every time he makes a move, Yvanka. He does, and he just simply has to dance, dance with his kings, protect the weakness on d5, and uh, just take a look at his bishop park there on d8. It's covering any entry points for the white king. It, really nothing that either player can do, just except just shuffle the pieces it's to fair. and fro. It's I, I mean, I, I don't know. Thanks so much for boarding for the raid. But I mean, it is the thing is, it is dropping here at the end of the game. Like, it's not, but 156 is still really high, no? I mean, 156, Sam's, Sam's thing was just bust. That, that does happen. But I mean, 156 is just so, so high here, e even, even at the end of the game. And it's decreasing, which makes me think that it is kind of real. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, though, right? It's crazy. So, all right. I think there is actually a game going on. So let's, let's take a look. What, what is there? There's day three. Is this going?
there let, let's 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 see there's there's some games here let's see what are the uh what, what are the heart rates of like these games today this is eric or not slight advantage to sam in this position you yeah heard? definitely and it, it also just taking a look at the clock times it doesn't look like sam is... yeah see like th this looks like this looks much more like th this looks normal like eric's like 112 sam is at 92. i mean this 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 looks more normal like yes it's a little bit on the upside but it's the opening it's everything's very calm i want to see if they go up to like 140 by the end of the game surprised. and also let's, let's go forward out. Let's see what's happening. And you can see already here that White has a very nice position and, and White has just played Yuvanka's idea, stopping Eric. Yeah, see this looks this this looks this looks actually much more solid. This looks much more solid because again, my my recollection recollection is I played an event in Norway, I think it was a 960 event, and we had to wear heart rate monitors. I think in general I was somewhere around like 110. And Magnus was somewhere around like 90, generally before like it got into crazy end games where nobody had time. So if Wesley's actually one, if we see another Wesley game where he's 140, that's uh, crazy. But does what did Wesley play today or not? Did Wesley play? No, he didn't play. Okay, let me see what happens at the end of this game. Though. Let me see. How, how low do the Eric's trying to create some kind of is marching forward. He was some of his moves. He nearly did a big second as well. Um, I don't. Okay, low on time. Let's see what's happening. Probably guess that Eric is the better. Uh, very better play when their times get really, really short. More exchanges coming on the board, and I, I suppose that's good news for Eric. Because Are they done the showing the heart rate? They're done. Let me He's go back. That confident here, Yvanka. Yeah. Look at tw 19 seconds. 19 already. seconds, and uh, Sam initiating some trades just to get control of the A line. This is good stuff. Yeah, see, because okay. this, this looks normal. Like you see, Eric's got like Eric's got like nine, 20 seconds on the clock. He's down a minute. A little bit nervous because Sam has more space, so he's like 120. I mean, th this looks about right. This this does look about right. Um, so nice. this does look this, this does look correct. Okay, so let's see. Is anybody else? Eric, I guess won the game or something. XUC hit 200 when gambling. Okay, it's just crazy though, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. What about the other one? Let's see. How high do the heart rates get here? And it's Ray Robson who has. Okay, pretty normal here too. Like 113, yeah, so 100. Like Dominguez is obviously a bit more relaxed than he was the other day. Maybe getting used to the scenario, the pressure. Uh, you know that everyone's watching your game. You know if you make one mistake, you'll have us laughing at you and saying, oh dear, what an idiot. Would we dare <laughs> say that? No, we wouldn't. But it's, uh, it's a potential. Their timing, like we've mentioned also, it starts very. Yeah, I had I had one thirty at the end of my games against Magus in Norway. I think I mean let me see if I can find that game, the game where I flagged him. Um, Carlson Nakamura uh, nine sixty rook, rook and Bishop, I guess it was. Um, Bishop. Let me see if I can find that on YouTube because that that's a, that that should be a good one. Um, where is it? Uh, let me let me check it on another monitor. <clears throat> Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Uh, not where Carlson flag, nine sixty. Game one, game two. I'm trying to see if I can find the game. Maybe my mods can find it. Find it instead of me. There was a game where I flagged him in the nine sixty. Um, and the let me see. Was it this one? Maybe it wasn't this one. No, that's the wrong one. Yeah, there, there, there was a video. Um. There's a video where I where I played played Magnus, uh, or where I played I played Magnus in 960 in Norway like four year four or five years back, and at the end of the game I flagged him, but I think my heart rate got to like 160, something like that. But anyway, let's see, do the heart rates get much higher here or not? Let's see if we go forward. How how high do the heart rates get? Go back here. What's uh, Lenny and Dominguez has done? He's advanced his G block. He's got to play with a bit more passion here. He can't just keep shuffling those pieces around the more he shuffles yeah this looks about right no I mean, this looks well, right you know he's yeah this looks completely right it's like 120 ish bordering 130 i mean this looks pretty normal so i guess we're going to see tomorrow then about wesley we'll see we'll see where wesley's heart rate is tomorrow um carlson wins and flags is this the one is there a video of it is, is there any is there a youtube video oh there there is a clip okay let's let's, let's watch this clip um let's watch this clip overall because they been... yeah see like here we here we are at the end of the game and magnus is 107 and i'm 146 like this is the very end of the game when magnus is seven seconds so i'm trying i'm trying to flag him so this, this actually makes sense uh, about 119 it's not that close but the time five seconds for magnus four no well he will he will have to offer a draw he cannot just go on and on two seconds 
One. No, he's going to lose on time. time. And he's lost on time. I'm sure he has. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, so you see, this is what I'm saying. Like, you see, like, this is at the very end. This is as dramatic as it gets. And I'm at 147. So, like, that's why, I mean, the Wesley one, we, we have to see tomorrow what, um, what Wesley's heart rate is actually at. <laughs> we have to see tomorrow what, um, what Wesley's heart rate is at. 120 is low. Yeah, Ma that's what I said, though. I said Magnus's heart rate is generally a little bit lower um, than everybody else's, which I think is one of the reasons that he actually does so well in these critical moments, is that he actually has, like, it, it is lower in general. So... These are the verse element for the raid. Appreciate thinking of Bortnik chest as well. Um, grave background. Yeah, that's actually Bobby Fischer's grave, you guys. This is from Norway. I played against Magus, I think 2018 Fischer Random World Chess Championship. And this is Bobby Fischer's grave that they, for whatever reason, had on the wall at the at the place we were playing. Don't don't ask me why they had a picture of Bobby Fischer's grave there, but they did. So it is what it is. Um, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's just have the grave behind everything. Um and go from there maybe it works out more sure but that's actually not the point i'm making um well that's part of it but like what i was saying is like i'm really curious about wesley like is wesley going to be like 170 tomorrow or not i look younger now well I'm, I'm more in shape i'm happier life is better you know when life is good it's always you're you're always you're always going to look better just reality um so yeah so that, that was that was that clip um less than three but yeah, so it looks like nothing, nothing too crazy here. And I guess tomorrow, well, I'm not streaming tomorrow, I guess, but I'm definitely going to pay attention and see, uh, see what's going on. Less coffee can help. Wesley does drink a lot of coffee, right? Wesley is one of those people who drinks, um, who drinks a ton of coffee generally. So it does make sense. Anyway.